So let me bring this back to OER a little bit and talk about the why and the where. Um, why would we want to use these open educational resources and where can we find them? Uh, just a few months ago, if this works, yes, here we go. Five days school furloughs approved for Utah schools. We're in the midget, in the midget, <laughs> middle of some budget <laughs> interestingness in our lives right now. And I guess many of you uh, maybe have a relationship with the school somewhere here in Utah, but uh, budgets are very difficult right now to the point that we're laying off teachers, we're cutting school short by numbers of days, and we're looking for opportunities. We're looking for places where we can save money. Well, just yesterday, the New York Times ran this story about the $200 textbook versus the free one. You do the math. It invites you to. Textbooks, of course, are, <laughs> textbooks are terrifically expensive, um, but these open educational resources offer a pretty interesting alternative to them. So I want to talk very briefly about an organization called CK12. This is the, the website there, but of course the, this link is in the slides that you can download. This is the CK12 uh, website. And as you can see along the bottom here, well, I guess that's the middle. Um, CK12 is an organization that writes uh, high school textbooks plus teacher's editions plus solution manuals. And they make these textbooks available to anyone free of charge under one of these Creative Commons licenses you'll see over here. So they have, you know, from Algebra 1 up through Calculus, they have Earth Science through Biology, Chemistry, Physics. Uh, they have all these textbooks that literally are free for you to download, free to change, free to do anything that you want to do with to make them more useful for your students in your class. You don't have to ask permission. Um, that's what that little button up there tells you. You already have permission to do the things you want to do. And so here is one source of a major expense for a, a program that can just disappear and go away. These textbooks uh, have already been put on approved lists in Virginia and California uh, for full statewide adoption because they've been through a standards alignment process. It's been, they, uh, the science books have been through a standards alignment process in Utah as well. Uh, this fall there will be about 2,000 students that instead, uh, high school students in Utah, that instead of using their $100, $150 printed science textbooks, will either uh, use one of these printed out on 8.5 by 11 paper and put in a three-ring binder, so it's a $10 textbook now. Um, and it doesn't include the chapters that the teacher doesn't intend to cover. It'll just include the ones that they mean to teach. Um, and there are some schools where kids have iPads or netbooks or something, and in those schools it'll be literally zero cost for the kids that'll use these textbooks. And it'll be very interesting. Uh, we're running this as a study. Next summer, we'll look at the state's CRT science scores for the kids that use the free textbooks and the kids in the $150 textbooks. And I'm guessing we won't find a whole lot of difference in what they learned. Um, in fact, if we do find a difference, I will guess that it'll be because with these textbooks, the students can actually highlight in them and make notes in them. Because at $10 a pop, they're supplementals. They're not textbooks anymore as opposed to a textbook that normally needs to have a five-year life. So you're not allowed to write or deface or, you know, in any way mark in it. I mean, I think it'll be very interesting when we show in a modestly sized pilot here in Utah that using a free textbook, you can learn just as much or a little bit more as you can in a $150 textbook. I think the implications that will be quite interesting. Um, this is just a shot from inside the, the biology textbook to give you a sense of what that looks like. Um, the Open High School of Utah, I mentioned very briefly last year. Um, I'm, their, their material isn't up yet. I'm just going to uh, say that if you do go to this URL in another two or three weeks, um, their complete ninth grade curriculum will be available for you to download under a Creative Commons license and reuse in your own classes. So this will include English, algebra, earth systems, uh, geography for life, that kind of, that kind of content. Um, OER Commons is a, another website that you should know about. Um, I don't know if you can read these numbers over here, but these are the subject areas. They've gone, essentially, they've gone around the web and cataloged all of the openly licensed education materials that they could find. And you'll see here, you know, 1,700 in the arts, 6,000 in humanities, 3,000 in math and statistics, 17,000 in science and tech, another 5,000 in social studies. Or if you look at it by grade level, in the high school case, we're talking about 13,000 of these openly licensed materials that might be photos, might be lesson plans, might be entire textbooks, 
that you don't have to ask anybody's permission and you don't have to pay. They're just there. They've been made available for you to download and do anything you'd like to do with. Go ahead. How do these guys make money? Oh, sure. Well, so in the case of CK12, the first group I talked about, well, actually, let's run back here for a second. It's, there's kind of a funny uh, coincidence here. This guy here, this is Scott McNeely. I don't know if, I guess I should have asked. I could have awarded 100,000 bonus points for anybody that recognized him. Scott McNeely is one of the founders of Sun uh, Microsystems, which is a large and very successful uh, software company. And so he set up a foundation to do this kind of work, and the money comes from Scott. In the case of CK12, actually, uh, Vinod Kosla, the, the primary organizer behind this organization, was another co-founder of Sun. It just so happens. And the money uh, for CK12 comes from uh, him. Um, in the, the Open High School is a charter school, so the, the funds for, for this organization come from the state. Uh, OER Commons does a variety of things. They do some policy analysis. They do research. They, um, so they're out you know, seeking grants from different organizations for the different kinds of work that they do. Um, that's where a lot of their funding comes from. Um, this URL was much, much, much too long to fit on the page, so I used a shortener uh, here. But there's another resource called the Open Educational Resources Handbook for educators. So this is a book about open educational resources, this is the cover over here on the right, written specifically for educators um, that is available from this URL. You can download it for free as a PDF or if you'd like a printed copy you can purchase a printed copy for 25 bucks or something like that. Um, and then I have to plug, I have to shamelessly plug my own course uh, which will be opening really soon now for enrollment about finding and using uh, open educational resources. And then lastly, just if, if telling you that there are 350 million of these things out there on the uh, wide internet right now didn't convince you that this whole Creative Commons thing and open educational resources thing is going somewhere, Google actually has explicit support for this built into their site. And let me show you how that works. So if you go to Google and you click where it says advanced search over on the right of the box there, this is the screen that comes up. This is the advanced search box in Google. And what you'll see right down here is a little doodad. What's the technical term for this, Justin? I don't know. Doohickey? Yeah. Date, usage rights, numeric range, and more. So in this usage rights box, I can, so you can actually click here. This will open up. And then under usage rights, you can say, I only want to search for things that are free for me to use and share and modify. And if you do that, and then up here you type in biology or English or whatever you're looking for, Google will only search the internet of Creative Commons licensed material. So you can actually go to Google and do a search for physics and only find the things that are free for you to download and pull into your class and do anything you want to do with. Um, and when you see how small the list of things in this advanced search page is, it should tell you how significant uh, it is that they actually support this kind of search that Google does in their advanced search. This is, uh, this is over a 10-year-old movement now that really has a lot of legs underneath it.